It's another video on Learn Brizzy Page Builder. And yes, tension is building up. When are we getting more features? When are we getting the updates? And when is Pro going to be released? <laughs> I know we're all very excited. So until then, all we can do is play around with what we've currently got. And what we've got is not bad, but we want more. Give us more. I'm JP, and in this channel, we are looking at the free version currently of Brizzy and some of the features. And in this specific series, we look at the blocks that come with Brizzy and we deconstruct them a little bit to understand how can we make a very basic website, but still make it look like it's got all the fancy bells and whistles that we are used to in our other websites. And that's what we're going to be doing today by adding a block here from the Brizzy page builder and it's going to be a gallery image, image gallery. If you go to your light blocks and you just scroll a little bit down, you will see this one with the six images. And we load that image gallery and we've got six images here with a slightly tinted background. I'm pretty sure of that. Let's just look at it. Yes. And we're going to be recreating this image gallery. Now, in many other page builders, of course, and especially themes, we usually have some layouts like masonry and different kinds of portfolio layouts for images and portfolios. And naturally, you're not going to get that in this free builder. So you have to you know, work around a little bit to make it look like an image gallery that we are used to maybe doing with an element or a plugin or a carousel. And this is what we're going to be looking at, how Brizzy did it. Right, just quickly look through it. Here is a text element at the top. And then we have these six images here, each one inside a column. And then we have a spacer, a divider here, plus a button, button at the bottom, button at the bottom. Before we start, I want to draw your attention to the mobile version at the bottom. And lately, it is almost something that I'm starting to think, shouldn't I be developing a website in mobile version instead of desktop version? Desktop is, of course, bigger. It's easier to do. But if I look at every time I share nowadays a website with friends, you know, you either share it through WhatsApp or Skype or some other app, they open it on their phones. And that is their first impression. And many people that I talk to nowadays, they, they want to check the website immediately. And I'm starting to think for myself, how am I going to get my head to make that change? You know, that I should focus more predominantly on mobile and not desktop. It's still difficult because coming from a graphic design background, desktop is just so convenient. You know, it's big and you can do your layouts very spacious. But the reality is people are using mobile. Right, so what I want to say quickly about the mobile, let's first look again at the desktop, is that you see that these images are nicely aligned, same size, everything looks good. If you go to the mobile and you click on an image, you will see that it's very strange that here is your container, aka the column, and then your image extends beyond the right side margin. And Originally, what I had done is I would click on the image and then grab the settings here of the image and I would reduce the size and I found 96 to be the perfect one. So I would go and I would click on each of these and I would type in 96% and it would then go back into the container of the column. But then one day I just decided to view this. So you can now see that the two top images are the ones that I have changed. But then these guys here at the bottom, they are still the default images extending over the right side margin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to preview it here. Click on the preview button and it will load into the desktop preview. But we can Manage that by making the browser a little bit smaller and then see what does Brizzy do with it. So this is how it will look on your desktop. Let's make it then cell phone size. And here you go into the cell phone size. And what you can see 
is that no overlapping. It's very nice. You've got your white margins over here. Everything is working nicely. So it's again one of those features that even though when you go into the page builder, you will see it overlapping, you don't really need to do anything about it. It is going to display correctly once you go into cell phone display. And in fact, you will see that the ones that I made smaller are now smaller than the rest. Yes, this is something that Brizzy will also need to fix because, you know, we like things to be perfect and we like them to be consistent. So let's go back and then for good measure, delete the block so we can start afresh. Let's load it again and let's see how quickly I can do this. Of course, I didn't find all these images exactly, so I just used my own. Let's start with creating a new block and then delete the default that they give us. Let's go look at the settings of this block. It's boxed at 100% and the background color is this off white or off gray, very popular color that people like to use on backgrounds to make you know the images stand out. What am I doing? Let's do it again, go to color and change the color. Next, we drag in that text element we're going to type in here, image gallery. I wish one video can go by that I can spell correctly. And that is definitely a heading one setting for them. And the color is the second swatch and also center aligned. Change it to heading one, second swatch. And then over here, we're going to set it on H1. Of course, I will say every time I would prefer putting it on H2. And then we are going to drag in columns. Grab the columns here. And then we're going to duplicate it to give us three columns in a row. Now the image, image is done right. I say that in quotation marks. You need to begin to understand a little bit how Brizzy handles images. The width of an image is determined by the width of the column. So we've got three columns here, which means if you drag any image, regardless of its dimension into these columns, they are going to fit the width. The image is not going to push the width of the column wider or narrow it. It's going to retain that width of the column. But in good designer style, we're not going to drag in three elements. We're only going to work on one and then we're going to duplicate it twice, delete these two so that we can get a nice equal layout. So let's add the image element and then we're going to grab an image. I took a few of these, seeing that we're in soccer season, adding that in there. So the image loads and now you've got that spacing of the width that is similar to the one up here. If you want to know what is the height of this image, your guess is as good as mine. And the reason for that is that there is no set height on these containers. I cannot determine what is their height, even if I know what is the pixel, di pixel dimensions of the image and the resolution, none of that is going to help me. For example, you may think that these images are all scaled the same, but to show you they are not, Click on this one on settings and you will see that the size and the height both at 100%. But if you just hop over to this lady here, click on settings again, you will see it's 100 at 96%. And I believe this one at the bottom, 95%. So determining the height of this image is going to be your decision, your choice. And you will have to decide that to your preferences. So I'm going to drag this out a little bit. I don't want to go as big as theirs because I would like all of this to fit into one view. You know, at this moment, I have the title up here and then my button uh, below what I can see here. So I'm just going to go for this size. And I would like to play around a little bit with it. Let's bring and let's zoom in and then take it up a little bit there. Mm, yeah, I'm being picky now at this moment. Good. This zoom function here is independent of your settings function over here. 
the height is determined by what I drag up up and down here and you can see that if I play around with the height slider it's going to do the same that is the height and this size here is the is the width of the image not of the container of the image let me show you what happens if I reduce it you will see this is the width of the image and it goes to a hundred percent of the container good so we've got that there and all I'm going to do now is I am going to duplicate this container which is the column and I'm going to do that two times and then I'm going to delete these empty ones and that is as easy as it can get I'm going to switch around with other images and for each one you need to decide what you want to do one thing you have to notice because we zoomed on this image the zoom is also copied to the next so I don't want to be zoomed in here I'm going to drag that out and yes I have to keep that there same for this one let's change the image and the first thing I'm going to do is zoom out and I'm going to drag my point over here I want more of these people I want this leading line here of the exit way very nice next thing is we want to duplicate now that would be again a nice idea if you had put all of these columns inside a row you just duplicate the row but we didn't do that and why not because we are deconstructing a brizzy block let's see and let's try a workaround for what they did I'm going to duplicate this image and then I'm going to grab it drag it down until I see the thick dark gray line and let it go and then I'm going to duplicate this one twice there you go let's change these images as well so we can get our theme now because I've already reduced the zoom on this one my zoom is already at zero here I just want to move this one up mm, okay I've got it already at its top height let's change the other two as well so we can get a nice theme going here and then the last one voila what do I want to do I'm going to put this one to the right and the reason I'm doing that is purely for design purposes because I've got the ball here on the left I want to balance it out a little bit with the one on the right two cents I want to add here quickly I got all these images from unsplash now I will never use unsplash images on any of my own websites they are good containers and especially for magazine or e-newsletters they are very good for background usage but if you are promoting your own products please do not use stock photos at all uh, if you have something like a bistro or a coffee shop or a candy shop or your own wedding you're not going to post photos of other people's wedding on your wedding website will you and you should try and do that at all times people are not blind to the fact anymore of stock photos everyone understands stock photos nowadays and it's very easy to spot them but the second two cents I want to give here is that these photos are highly stylized the photographers have applied a style on their photos if you download the photos from the same photographer you would usually get a uh, harmony among those photos but as I look at these six photos they don't match you know you've got a matte look over here it's a very soft your darks are not pure black and then you've got a very saturated image over here and then you know you've got very nice right uh, uh, bright reds or or also saturated reds over here whereas the reds over here do not match this seems a little bit technical but these images don't work together even though they have one theme as a soccer theme they don't work together unlike the images that Brizzy chose here at the top they work together there are it's a cool image the only one that I think maybe doesn't work for me here is the one on the left top but the rest of them has have a cool uh, beige tan kind of feel to it so they work well together so be very careful of just using unsplash and pixabay these images you know just arbitrarily on your website you could actually be making a mess if you don't know what you're doing and what I see here for me is a mess 
Um, others may look at it and think, wow, look at those awesome images. But just the fact that I have a matte image here with a highly saturated one over here, ooh, you know, it just doesn't work for me. But still, hey, we've recreated the block. I couldn't get these images, but let's finish it off. We've got a spacer here, and I've seen that Brizzy really, really actually encourages people to use the spacers because this will help you align your mobile versions better instead of increasing or decreasing your padding and your margins. The spacers will help you a lot when you're working with your mobile versions. So if I look at this one and I look at this one, this one is probably what, 30? Aha, uh -huh. and I know this one is 50 by default, so we're going to change it to 30. And then finally, let's bring in my old nemesis, the button. I want to scroll down first, grab our button over here, and then let's go have a look at what they did. First thing is they have a medium button. It's got a fill, it's got rounded corners, and the corners are at 27, and the border is at two. So let's do the same. Let's see if I can remember all of that. Yes, alrighty. And then the text will expand it, view our works, click in it, caps on my keyboard, view our works. And then if I hover over it, what happens? This one, it just goes slightly lighter. This one goes to a dark purple or a, you know, off white, off white, or off purple. Let's see what they did here. So it will be under colors. Click here for hover and then background. It is the second swatch at an opacity of, I would guess, 80% and everything else stays the same. Cover, hover, and then, yeah, except I pretty much guessed that the border, oh, the border is the same color. Good, right. Why this one looks wider than the one that I have here at the bottom? Let me just look at that. Okay, that is mine. That won't help me. It is more or less the same. Very interesting for me. I, I keep feeling something is a little bit wider. I may look at it later. Let's see, letter spacing at three, but I think this is all the same. Sometimes scrolling up and down does confuse me. Okay, good. But we have recreated this image gallery. And actually many times when I work with image galleries, even though there is maybe a baked in, you know, a shortcut for making your own image galleries or a plugin that can do it, I have found coming from a photography uh, background, especially before the graphic design is that I like to have full control over my images. And I do like the Brizzy way. I, I won't believe, I, I will not say it's images done right. For that, I need far more control than I'm getting currently. But I do like the fact that I can grab these things and I can, uh, I can you know, change the height as I want and the image will stretch automatically with it. Um, this is much, much more convenient to use than some of the other page builders that I currently have. When it ever comes to photography websites, I cringe because I know even the best themes on the market that sell themselves as photography themes, I've pulled my hairs out in frustration working with those themes. And I like this. There's, of course, a lot of things that can still be added to this to make it great, but this is a very good start. And yep, there is another block that we have deconstructed. Hope you've learned something. And please, if you have any ideas, leave a comment and thank you for the support. I am really, really grateful for all the people that have reached out to me in the last week plus. Um, yes, and I really appreciate all those positive and also, you know, the advice and recommendations. So coming to the future, I just want to mention this quickly. I've been getting numerous requests to do a full on page, how to build a website with Brizzy. I am not confident to do that at this very moment, especially because I'm not sure I will use a free builder like Brizzy to build a website. I would wait for the pro. So let's wait for the pro because I believe some of the pro ideas will also filter down into the free one. And that means we've got to stick it out for another two plus months. I keep saying two, but they keep saying two to four. So yes, let's keep hoping for that. And in the meantime, we become pros at knowing how the free one works.